What's happening? It's Sir William, and today we are in the middle of the Oconee National Forest. Well, Cherokee National Forest in Oconee, Tennessee. Something like that. You see, I came on a short little uh, excursion to Chattanooga, if you will, and the reason I came was to look for places to live and work. Unfortunately, I've been met with the most amount of rain I've ever had to deal with while on any kind of adventure. I didn't do much videoing except for this one little piece here where um, I came up a tricky trail that was recommended to me and I came across a tree covering it. Night wheeling is always an interesting thing. Night wheeling in the fog definitely adds for the pucker factor especially when you don't know where you're going. And then you make it all the way up to right next to where you need to go just to find that there's a tree in the damn way. Hopefully, my old trusty uh, trail boss here can take care of it for us. So the problem is, is if I get that one down, there's a damn another one. You may hear that I'm out of breath. It's only because I just now I'm finding this out after swinging at the other damn tree for so long. Note to self, invest in chainsaw. For real. This is crazy. Look at how close I am to my destination too. That's where I'm going. I'm literally right there. Damn you tree. Damn you nature. You should see what I had to deal with to get up here. The fog. So the fog is legit so bad that like I could not see. It's probably going to take another hour to go back down the mountain and then back around and then come up. So more than likely what I'm going to do is just camp out right here on this road. No big deal. I don't think anybody's coming. I know there's nobody coming from the other side. If so, then I'm going to hear them with chainsaws and I doubt anybody's going to be coming up this, this road here. If you would have seen some of the technical trail that I had to go through to get here, you'd understand why. This is part of the game though. You got to pay to play, right? So I'm just going to camp out here in the middle of this dirt road um, and hopefully I can see this place in the morning because the pictures look badass. Um, I got hollered at by a dude that follows me on YouTube that happened to see me riding down the street and he told me about this place. So good looking out. Unfortunately, I can't get there. That sucks. So the other tricky part is, you know, turning around and all of this. Yeah. And not damaging the forerunner in the process. I think normally Chattanooga in this area gets like 50 some odd inches of rain every year. It's on par with Seattle, to believe it or not. And last year they got 67 inches of rain and then it's been raining for like a week straight. So trails are nasty, they're muddy, they're ugh. Uh, I'm gonna set up the kitchen here, cook some coffee, get a little breakfast in me, and then we're gonna hit the road. Yeah, that guy. Huh? Pro tip. Whenever you make your coffee, if you're like me, and you have a certain cup that you use, like this one, make sure that you just fill your cup up and then fill your coffee up. Otherwise, you waste coffee and you also waste water. Water's kind of a precious commodity. Not when it's been raining for six days, but you get what I'm saying. These little filters, they're pretty nice. I got a pretty sophisticated measuring spoon. Yeah, hey, it works. Somehow or another, this burner's not working. See, last night, I had cooked with um, just this open, and I put the table up underneath here without the front legs folded out. Normally the expense that I have, or the only expense that I have rather, is just like gas whenever I go on these trips. But this trip's been a little particular because I've encountered more rain this time than I've ever had to deal with. So this time I haven't been able to cook as much as I'd like to, therefore I've got to eat out more. Well, you factor probably seven to $12 each time that you eat out, that can get expensive, you know what I mean? So I always prefer to cook. Last night I just got fed up with it and said screw it, I was just gonna cook in the rain, so I did. And whenever I did, it got a lot of rain in here, a lot of water in here. The need for an awning has never been more present than it is now. I definitely gotta look into either making an awning or buying an awning. I really don't wanna buy an awning because for $500, man, I feel like I can make a pretty good awning, you know? What I really like is one of those deals that kind of fold all the way around. That's ideal those things now you're talking big money so this morning i'm gonna make a little uh breakfast burritos in teleco plains i stopped at save a lot i've got some tomato one bell pepper one onion an avocado eggs all i could find was 12 eggs normally i don't carry 12 eggs but 12 eggs 
gotta have cheese on everything. Only the highest quality sausage, of course. Wamplers. <laughs> it's great sausage, it says so right there on the package. travel all the way up the mountain just to find that the gates close sometimes that happens so now I'm gonna look on the map here and just try to find another route tis what it is there's some hiking trails up here though if you're interested in that sort of thing um, hiking trail 164 and then there's another one over there so I'm close to the Bald River Gorge but I don't know exactly where I'm at uh, it, right here on this road that's where that's where I'm at just kind of picking roads that look like they lead to where I need to go and this is the road that I chose so I'm gonna have to go back down get on Forest Road and then get on Bald River Road and then come back around and hopefully that'll be a good little detour if not then uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do but it does look like there's a cool little lookout tower road I think I might go try that out see what's over there too one of these things got my speed sensor whenever I was on the Transamerica Trail, so ever since then I've been real weary about running those deals over. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit about um, kind of just driving technique whenever you're out here. One of the things that a lot of people don't do is they don't take advantage of their vehicle's um, gear selector. So in an automatic, you'll have an uh, S mode, and typically people get that confused with sport mode. It actually doesn't mean sport mode. What it means is sequential. So if I put it on three, then it will shift one, two, three, but will not go higher than three. And that's good for going down hills, especially steep ones. So one of the things that I always like to do is whenever I'm going down and up hills, is I put it in either three, two, or one. If it's a really steep hill, then obviously it'll be at one. If it's a somewhat steep hill, then it'll be at two, and, and so on. That being said, a lot of folks don't do this and they just utilize their brakes. Now, you can utilize your brakes, obviously, that's what they're there for. But by using the sequential shifter, you're able to actually utilize the engine and transmission and if in four-wheel drive, the transfer case, in order to keep the vehicle's speed low. What you'll find a lot of times is that the vehicle will kind of run away from you while you're going down the hill. And what this does is keeps that from happening. So it gives you a little bit more control of the vehicle. Anytime that you have control of the vehicle is a good thing. Right now I'm just going down this moderately graded hill in second gear. The vehicle is keeping me at a pace that I need to be at that's comfortable for uh, these conditions and for this trail. Roughly about 20 miles an hour. It's a nice paved trail, nothing to it. That is how you utilize the gear shifter in your automatic transmission. And the reason that you want to do this is so that way you have less wear on other components like your brakes. The more you know. Boy, that thing angry, boy. Damn. I'm telling you, this rain is crazy. So the other night, whenever I was in Chattanooga exploring a little area that was pinpointed for a good place to camp, I came across an obstacle in the middle of the trail. And whenever I posted a video of it, everybody had all kinds of different ways that I could have taken care of this obstacle, even though I don't have a chainsaw with me. Which, by the way, I'm getting a chainsaw. Well, now I've come across another obstacle. 
What exactly am I supposed to do with all that? That's way too much to try to attempt to clear this thing um, with no chainsaw and just an ax and a tow rope with apple. I just, it's just too much. So plan B, this is one of the reasons that I started the trek on Friday in order to get there on Sunday is for stuff like this. So now I have to go back to the map and take a look at where we're at and figure out another route. Here is where we're at. Now when I originally planned this, you can see that I marked turn left there. So when I originally planned this, I had planned to go right, right there if it was open. But I didn't see where it was open. Back up River Road and then get up on Indian Boundary Road. And then come all the way back around. Uh, there's where I'm going. So, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to go back up, take North River Road to River Road, or North River Road up to, hopefully this will be open. If that's open, then I can just hop onto that and then go up Indian Boundary Road and then uh, turn around and basically backtrack. So... That's the current situation. Let's go check it so out. So the little dot that I'd put says go right if open. It's not open. So now I'm going to have to take that detour I was telling you guys about where I'm going to have to go up to River Road, then take River Road. Hopefully I can take River Road all the way through this little area, but you know, those things are hit and miss on whether or not they're open. But if I can, that would be ideal because then I could just cut right on over to here. If not, then I literally have to go all the way around to get to it. And that would be a really long way, out of the way. So, let's hope for the best. Good news, it's open. So this will cut down. Oh, damn, that's a little tree though. We can take care of that. Man, I want y'all to see the level of pucker I just had. Holy cow, buddy. So I'm coming down this little area right here and I hit this slickness and look at that. <laughs> you gotta go slow, got to. And that's the reason why. All right, so here we are at the spot that it says on the map I should be able to go this way and get onto that main road, right? Well, that's it. It's been closed for a long time. So now I've got to go down whichever way it takes me, which on the map, they both dead end. So now I'm just kind of at the mercy of wherever this thing leads me to. Now what I have seen happen before is these two like things like this will connect. So hopefully that happens here, I don't know. This little trail's not on the map, but it looks like it might connect to where I need to go. So. I'm gonna try it out and see what we got. Good news, I was right. So it actually led me right around that little piece that we saw earlier that was all messed up. And uh, now I'm back on track to get on Indian Boundary Road. That's good, because that saves a lot of time.
I've been traveling for quite a bit and uh, I'm running low on gas. Well, running low, I'm at like a quarter of a tank. I usually try to make it a point to get gas right around a quarter of a tank and uh, don't really have a clue where I'm at, but I got out to take a look at the uh, trail here and kind of assess what's coming up next as far as obstacles go. And it looks pretty cool. I know it doesn't look like much on the camera, but uh, definitely pretty uh, technical little piece here. So this ought to be for interesting because it's wet and I don't have a spotter. Yeah, but we're gonna hope for the best. Cool thing is I've actually been here before, but last time I was up here, I, I was coming up. So I know where I'm at now vaguely. So let's go ahead and try to hook this thing up. Guys, listen, don't let your pride get in the way. Get out the vehicle and check it out if you need to. Make sure that you're going the right direction. No reason to, you know, try to grow a sack out here in the middle of nowhere. At least I'm going to come back just a little bit more over to the right. And then hopefully I can ease it on right down here. Slow and easy, man. It takes care of it every single time. Slow and easy. I can't I can't stress that enough. Good thing I got a skid plate on the KDSS motor, huh? We picked up a passenger. Huh? Check this guy out. What the hell is that? Come on, man, you gotta stay here. All right, I finally made it back to the spot that it ended on the map um, had I gone the original area. Let me show you the massive amount of detour that I had to do. All right, so I got stopped right there on the trail and ideally I would have come out over here, took a left and then come up right where I'm at now. What I had to do instead was go back, go up, and then I got onto then I got onto the skyway right there. Now, I was almost out of gas though. So I had to go all the way back down the Skyway into the Shell Station that's right outside of Teleco Plains. Then I had to travel all the way back down the Skyway to get here, where I'm at now. Now I'm going to try to take, I think this road will go through, um, it's right off the, the side of the highway here, or that Sherall Skyway or whatever, Highway 143 basically. I'm going to try to take that and connect eventually over here to my little red track that I have. So that's the plan. This red track I downloaded uh, a couple years back and it basically goes all the way around um, uh, up 40 and all. Like this over here is Hurricane Creek. You can't see it because I don't have that map folder on, but that's Matt's patch, Max patch. So yeah. This area over here is uh, Cherokee. Uh, you know, you got Robbinsville, Santilla, or Santilla, whatever you call it, Marble Murphy's right there. So that's kind of gives you an idea where we're at. That's the current situation. Uh, right now it is dark, so I am trying to find camp. 
and hopefully I can find it somewhere along here. That sign right there means that you're on the right path. That sign there means that you need to find another path. So here's a quick update. Um, that road's close. <laughs> so I went back down the road that I should have come out at had the tree not been in our way. And then I got to thinking about it as I'm riding down there. I was trying to look for a spot to camp. And as I was riding down there, I got to thinking about it. And before I saw that tree down, I actually came across campsite number one. And there's signs saying that you have to camp in designated areas in this area. So I can't just uh, camp out anywhere. That being said, now we're in another predicament because, well, let me show you. All right, so here we are right here. And normally the idea was that I was going to come out here and go straight. And what this actually does is comes to like a little tunnel, goes up underneath the road, and then forks off right. Uh, see this little tunnel? Goes up underneath the road, and then forks off right here. It's closed right there, so I cannot take that road. Now, I'm going to go back and uh, try to see if this road might be open, and then maybe I can find somewhere to camp along that road. If not, then there is no other roads off of 143 except for, says that this is a road, Hopper Bald, I don't know, and Hickory Knob. Both of those roads, though, come to a complete dead end, so they wouldn't be taking me to where I need to go. Perhaps there might be a spot to camp off there, but I don't know. So here's the deal. It's not always puppy dogs and rainbows, you dig? I'm at the Santalia Gap Scenic Overlook right now. I'm fixing to cook my dinner, and it is what it is. You know, you don't always get the best campsites. You don't always get to wake up next to the most beautiful scenery, especially if on a whim you decide that you're going to go from Oconee, Tennessee, to Asheville, North Carolina, and try to make it all on four service roads and through the National Forest. So Tonight, because I didn't have a chance to stop by the grocery store, I'm stuck with very limited supplies for dinner. So I've got one tomato I've got some chicken breast I've got some cheddar cheese I got some tortilla wraps so I'm gonna make some little taquitos I guess basically and uh, some Doritos so that's gonna be dinner for tonight tomorrow morning it should be pretty though it says that we're at uh, 5390 feet so I definitely feel it as far as the cold weather goes as soon as I get done cooking here I'm gonna hop in the back and I'm gonna camp out. If somebody comes and tells me to move, then it is what it is. If not, then I'm not gonna move. I'll see you folks in the morning. Another morning, more rain. And this time we're in the clouds. Jeez. Wouldn't you believe it's raining? This rain is monotony, man. I mean, just constant. It's been raining nonstop since I left uh, Columbia. Pretty crazy, but it is what it is. What sucks though is I don't wanna get out in this stuff, so um, I've been trying to transfer everything. I've already moved my boots up front. I'm about to make the crawl up front here in just a minute and uh, just kinda pack up everything as best as I can from inside the vehicle, inside the vehicle. And uh, then we're gonna keep it moving towards Asheville. I'm gonna try to find some place with some shelter, maybe that when the rain lets up uh, on the trail, I can cook some breakfast, make some coffee, or whatever I need to do. But last night I woke up quite a few times. The wind was rocking the truck all night long. Um, I'd love to be able to show you the 5,300 foot gap that we're uh, overlooking here, but you can't see it, one, because of the fog, and two, because of the rain, and three, the rain. I'm not, I'm not getting out there. I love you guys, but I'm, I'm out. I'm good. Deal is, is last night it was, remember I pulled up and it was foggy. And we've been in the clouds the entire night. Well now everything has got like a little coating of moisture on it because I leave these windows open whenever I'm sleeping. And I probably, I probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, if you look, now it's, everything's wet in here. So that sucks. Um, definitely gonna have to air it out. Day two, gate 60. Basically, I've got to go all the way back down to the Blue Ridge Parkway and then come back and then connect to where I need to go, which is then going to lead me up into Maggie Valley, which is then going to lead me 
right there in the Great Smoky Mountains. Sometimes you come across an obstacle in the trail that you just have to evaluate the risk to reward. This is one of those times. Chances are, I could make it. Problem is, is what happens if I'm wrong? Well, I'll tell you what happens if I'm wrong. What happens if I'm wrong is I'm stuck out here, no signal in a vehicle that's toast. Not worth it. And for what? Only to get to the other side of a trail that I don't even know if it's open over there. Judging on the fact that I've ran in all these gates, it's probably not. The water from the fact that it's been raining for like a week straight is just crazy. I'm not gonna take my chances on that. Turn around, don't drown, you know? It is what it is, so now I gotta go all the way back, but hey, what can I do, man? Damn, these gates, man. Rerouting again, it's starting to get to be aggravating. This is probably one of the most aggravating trips I've ever had to take between the rain and the amount of closed roads, man. This is unbelievable. Somehow or another, I gotta find another campsite. The deal is, is I was gonna go up to near Max Patch and camp out there. Problem with that is they had a rock slide or mud slide or whatever you wanna call it. Come on. I mean, really? Why? All right, so after countless hours of driving around and finding nothing but road close signs all over the place, I've now backtracked back to a road that I found on the map that kind of cuts out a large portion of the highway here. And there's campsites all along the road here most of which you have to actually hike into or not hike into but you have to pack all your stuff into which as you can see kind of poses a problem for my particular setup but anyway i found this little cut off on the side of the road again it's one of those deals if somebody tells me to move then i'm gonna have to move but there's a campfire right here so somebody's camped out here before shouldn't be that big of an issue other thing i was worried about is kind of a landslide because i'm right here on the little edge but it's one of those things that if it happens, it happens. It was, you know, meant to be, I guess. But nonetheless, that's what I'm currently working with right now. Um, I'm going to, it's about 5 o'clock, uh, roughly 4.30, 5 o'clock, something like that. I'm going to get set up uh, for dinner and all, and I'm going to call it an early night because I'm pretty tired. I'm fixing to cook some really good chicken, broccoli, carrots, onion, and whatnot. Uh, with some teriyaki sauce, so that should be pretty good. Stay tuned for that episode of Camp Cooking. Wouldn't you know, I get done cooking my dinner, and guess what? More rain. Man, I tell you, this, this trip has been a challenging one for sure. You know, it's partly my fault because on a whim, I decided that I was going to try to travel from Ocoee, Tennessee to Asheville, North Carolina, all through the Appalachian Mountains via, you know, four service roads, dirt roads, and the path less travel. I could have probably gone online and made it a whole lot easier on myself had I had service and maybe plotted an area out that didn't involve closed road. Now, what I've found though in doing this in the past is that not all the times are the closed roads updated on the Forest Service website. That being said, I don't understand why they closed down the road. Like, comment down below. Why do they close down the roads? Does anybody know? I was gonna stop by the Pisgah National Forest Ranger office, but it was closed whenever I came by. So stay tuned for a video. I wanna reach out to the Forest Service Recommission and find out what it is that gets these roads closed down, how we as a community can help keep the roads open, and also what's the total reasoning behind closing them. I know that they close them certain times of the year, sometimes they don't. I get it. There's all kinds of different reasons that are out there. Um, I'm sure everybody's got some kind of reason that they've heard of. I know a big one has to do with the fact that people are littering on the trails, tearing the trails up, and, and so forth. So please, to anybody out there that maybe does this stuff, um, you know, Please make sure you pick up after yourself. Make sure that you don't tear up the trails. Whenever you come through, just treat it with some respect, you know. We're getting little we're getting fewer and fewer of these places that we can go out and enjoy. Nonetheless, we made it. The event tomorrow is at a brewery in Asheville. It's probably about 30, 45 minutes away. It's with Asheville Overland. Gonna have lifestyle overland there. Uh, Aaron Brown from the garage shop is supposed to be there. So 
I think it's going to be pretty fun. I'm pretty stoked to go. I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed the adventure. Till next time. Peace.